Hey guys, it's Tom, and I just want to jump right into this video. Five tips for Isotope RX Advanced Dialogue Noise Reduction. So, uh, Isotope RX is probably the most popular tool for dialogue editors to use for cleaning things up. It's also used in some uh, forums for mixing. There's plugins you can use in Pro Tools, but if you're dialogue editing, you're probably going to be sending stuff out of Pro Tools using RX Connect to isotope for a cleanup so you want to do a good job editing your dialogue to make it smooth make all the transitions good first and then you can start cleaning it up in isotope the reason for that is if you over process things you want to be able to go back to uh, your original edit which i've got videos on dialogue editing you can check those out this is very specific to isotope rx and the five tips i have are uh, to deconstruct your thinking into tonal, transient, and broadband, or noise. Some people call broadband noise. Uh, number two, tackle tonal problems first. Number three, for transients, which is the second problem you should be tackling, use decrackle instead of declick and mouth declick. Declick and mouth declick, I've never had great results with them. Uh, even tweaking them as much as I can, they just tend to, to overcook the sound, uh, overcook the audio file. So, Decrackle is very transparent, and it's what most dialog dialogue editors I've worked with, they reach for that tool first. Um, so number four, do simple edits in two dimensions for the best results, talking quality, quality results. And number five, use plugins surgically in RX, which that one, <laughs> it took me a long time to figure that out, but it's a really cool kind of secret tip. So, well, let's listen to what we're going to be working with today. I've actually created this sample we're going to be working with. Noise should not be feared. It should be respected, harnessed, even embraced. Noise is not the enemy. The real battle is differentiating between good and bad noise and understanding how to control it without destroying everything in your path. You can see the signal to noise ratio is pretty low there's a lot of lot of noise and and there's signal you can see it peeking out here 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 but it's a pretty noisy file and it has a lot of different things going on how did i create this let's listen to the individual elements just p snippets of them i started with this clean voiceover out of soundly it should be respected harnessed even embraced a little bit robotic but it's totally clean sounds like a voiceover recording then i added this kind of traffic wash. It's basically pink noise with a little bit of other, you know, backgroundy stuff going on. Probably the most annoying thing that's in there is this emergency siren. Which, in different parts of the world, that's going to sound different, but this is what we have here in the United States. Then I recorded some really disgusting mouth clicks. Uh, yeah, gross. And then finally, it's kind of the la creme to add on top. I added this 60 cycle hum. And that's just a straight up sine wave, uh, 60 hertz, like minus 25 dB or so. So that all mixed together to give us our noise sample that we're working on. Harnessed, even embraced. And we're going to be tackling each of these problems head on. Now, I've already copied this to a clean track. Do this every time you make uh, any kind of, let's say, destructive change to an audio file. Make sure you have a path back to the original, whether you're in Pro Tools, Logic, Reaper, Cool Edit Pro, whatever. Just make sure you can go back because if you overcook it, which you're going to if you're just starting out, you can still go back. So we need to get this into Isotope. I've got RX10 Connect open i'm going to send it and we have the file here we can see in glorious orange and blue all the problems we have to deal with so to go back to our to my notes because i have a hard time remembering deconstruct your thinking into tonal transient and broadband or noise the reason i have noise in parentheses is because you need to think like the deconstruct module in isotope this module so many people skip over it. They do not use it. They don't know how to use it, but it is one of the most useful tools. It's kind of like a secret weapon, really. 
And the reason it's that way is I think it's using the engine that a lot of the other plugins or, or modules, tools, whatever you want to call them in Isotope, use to kind of manually change the source recording that you're working with. In other words, like, I'm sure dhum is looking just for tonal stuff because that's what hums are. That's what this this line right here is. This is a tonal element. And then noisy stuff, which would be not just the traffic, but also the sibilant sounds. This is noise. It's just bandpass noise for these Fs and Ss. And then you have transients like these mouth clicks. So try to think like the deconstruct module uh, because it really helps you hone in instead of just processing this whole file and killing it with a bunch of modules that you're overusing, you can start to think, you know, of the sound and breaking it apart into its its individual components, tonal, noise, and transient. Noise meaning the broadband stuff. So the reason that's important is because the first thing we're going to tackle is we're going to tackle this easy generator hum, this 60 cycle hum. To do that, we're going to reach for dhum. I like to use dhum in adaptive mode. It seems to be the most transparent for whatever reason. Filter type, dynamic. You can see the other settings here. Sensitivity at 5.7, bands at 370, filter cue at 740. I'm going to hit render, and I'm not looking to totally kill the hum. I'm just looking to push it way far back to where it's not this. Noise should not be feared. It so let's render. Let's listen to it now. Noise should not be feared. It should be respected. I could barely hear it. I can see it, but I can't really hear it. So I'm going to say that's good enough. So we'll check that off our list. We've tackled one of the tonal problems, but we still have this siren to contend with. Harnessed, even embraced. Noise is not the enemy. The real battle... And the thing you'll run into with sirens is they are loud, and so they reverberate off of flat surfaces, like in a city. So you'll see you've got the tone. Let me do the paintbrush tool. You've got the tone here, but then you've got all this stuff, which is the reverb, the decay of the siren changing pitch. And it really gets bad when the pitch changes. You can see there's a little bit of a tail here, and there's a big tail here, probably because the, you know, it's the closest to the microphone at that point. So how do we tackle this? other tonal problem, which is a dynamic tonal problem. You could use Absentia DX for this, but uh, I'm going to try to keep this in isotope and I'm going to grab the paintbrush tool. I'm changing the size by holding command and then I am going to paint over the fundamental, meaning the root note of this siren. And I'm going to painstakingly draw all the way over until it basically goes away right there. The problem with this selection is that it doesn't account for the reverb tail and it doesn't account for the harmonics. So you can grab these three bars or you can do shift command H and bring up the harmonic selection tool. And you just start adding numbers until you get all the way to the top here. You can see this little, actually there's a little baby one up here that we probably can't hear. So we want to grab all the way to this. So two, three, four, five, we'll say that's good enough. At this point, what tool do you use? You guessed it. We're going to use deconstruct. We're going to take down the tonal. I don't want to touch any of the traffic airy wash or the consonants of the words. I just want to take out this siren and the siren is tonal. So we're going to reduce it down to about maybe 33 decibels. And we're going to hear what this does now. Harnessed, even embraced. Noise is not the enemy. The real battle is differentiating. Between it's better, but this reverb section here, where it's changing pitch when it's going up, the fundamental reverb is there, and then the fundamental reverb is here when it starts to change pitch going down because of the building. So I'm just going to highlight that kind of reflection, the ghost of it, and hit render again on deconstruct. And I'm going to do the same with this. And you might think, well, it looks like noise, um, but it's it's tough. Uh, and we'll get to why why this is considered to be tonal later. I can do shift, 
See how I'm not painting over this? I'm pretty sure this is going to mask the reverb tail, so I'm just doing shift to add to the selection. And I'm going to try to get out as much of this as I can without hurting the actual dialogue. Let's see what that... That looks good, but we need to listen. Even embraced. Noise is not the enemy. The re Harnessed. Even embraced. Noise is not... There's still a little bit here. So I'm going to render that. And what am I doing to get this out? I'm not highlighting the whole file. I'm actually doing uh, step four, which is edits in two dimensions. I'm thinking of the edits in frequency and time domain instead of just grabbing the whole thing. So let me just finish painting this out real quick. Noise is not the enemy. There's a little bit left right here. Noise is not the enemy. And there's some harmonics here. And doing this tonal and not touching the noise and transient makes it to where I can be a little fast and loose with my selections. Just to really... Noise is not the enemy. Noise is not... I think this is good enough for now. It should be respected. Harnessed. Even embraced. Noise is not the enemy. The real battle is differentiating between good and... Maybe I'll get this little pop out of here okay actually no i'm gonna do i'm gonna skip ahead to one of my other tips and i'm actually gonna do a copy paste not the enemy the real battle is different okay so i would say for the siren that's the most i want to get rid of it before i start to destroy this and i do not want to destroy this recording i want to keep it intact so tackle tonal problems we've got that checked off our list now, the next problem we should tackle is not the, the traffic wash, the broadband noise. We're going to save that for the last because it's the most dangerous thing to do, to do especially when you're dialogue editing. It should really be done during the mix. But um, if you do it during the dialogue edit, save it for last. So the transient noises we have that are bad, if we're, if we're splitting our thinking into tonal, transient, and broadband. So we've fixed the tonal, now we're moving on to transient problems. A lot of people will just highlight this and say, oh, there's a bunch of mouth clicks. Guess what I'm going to use for that? I'm going to use mouth declick. Don't do that. Mouth declick is destructive. It's going to take away your P's, your B's, consonant sounds. It's going to turn these clicks into digital mush. And it's not as transparent as using a tool called decrackle. Yes, use decrackle for mouth clicks. Don't use mouth declick use decrackle this is like all, most of the the really seasoned dialogue editors i've worked with use decrackle before they reach for any other kind of tool so use decrackle set the strength as low as it needs to be set the amplitude skew down and the quality high and i know i always say don't process the whole file but we're gonna do it so this is gonna pr process all this and you see the transient clicks have been greatly reduced. Noise should not be feared. It should be respected, harnessed, even embraced. Noise is not the enemy. The real battle is different. There's still some left. And you can see here, we're going to move to step four because I don't want to process more with decrackle or it's going to hurt the signal. It's going to hurt the dialogue. So we have to do some simple edits in two dimensions for the best results. And that means, you know, in Pro Tools, you can do this. That's it. You cannot do this. You can't paint. You can't lasso. Like, that's the, the power of isotope and why pretty much everything I work on goes to isotope. So I can see these are clicks here. What I'm going to do is grab some tone that I can just pop over the top of it. Not be feared. It, sh it should Super transparent. Feared. It should be respected. There's a couple of clicks here. What I'm going to do for these is I'm going to not use mouth declick. I'm going to use regular vanilla declick. But I'm just highlighting the problem and I'm going to hit render. I also have these assigned to shortcuts on my keyboard. So for me, declick is one because I use that a lot. Respected. Harnessed. Even embraced. Noise is not the enemy. The re There's some more uh, ticks here. These are lower ones. I'm just going to grab a little sample of noise and paste it over the top me 
the real battle is differentiating between good and bad noise. This is a big mouth pop. So I think I'm going to use declick for that. Good and bad noise. There's still a little remnant left, so I'm just going to grab a noise sample here. Good and bad. Nope. Too small of a selection. Good and bad noise. And understanding. There's a little tick here. Copy paste. And understanding how. Copy paste works, I would say, pretty much all the time. These ones I'm just zapping out with declick. And understanding how to. There's a. I missed a low one there. Understanding. Right understand there. Didn't work there, so I'm gonna copy paste. Understanding how to control it without destroying everything. Without destroying it. Without destroying it. Without. De there's another one here. This one's right in the middle of the word, so I'm just going to highlight it and hit one. Without destroying everything in your path. And there's one more here. Everything in your It's a low click, so I'm going to highlight and hit one. Everything in your path. Okay, that's pretty clean. So at this point, we've done some simple edits in two dimensions to get a really solid result. I'm not going to send it back to Pro Tools yet because I'm assuming that you also are going to want to deal with this broadband noise. If you want to do it with plugins in Pro Tools, you know, inserts that you can tweak in real time, that's the least destructive way you can do it. But if you want to do it in an isotope, I'm going to show you a really great secret weapon in isotope, which is if you scroll down, you've got all your repair modules here, but if you scroll down, you have this guy hiding here, plug-in. Now, what could this do? Well, any kind of, um, I think, I think this, I don't remember if it uses AU or VST plugins, but any plugin you've bought that has a uh, AU or VST version, you can use it in Isotope surgically. Like, you don't have to do the whole file. You could just highlight a frequency selection. Like, I just want to reduce the noise down here. You know, or or I just want to do hiss. Let's say you've got some nasty hiss up here. You can use this surgically. You can feather your selection so that it doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't. Where's the feather? Sorry, that was a paintbrush. <laughs> so you can feather the selection so it doesn't leave you like with a hard edge on your selection. Or if you want to do the whole file, you can do that too. So I'm going to use Acon. Digital Extract Dialog, not Akon and Young Jeezy, just Akon. You can also, yeah, so it's got audio unit and VST. You can do, uh, you know, Accentize DX Revive Pro. You can also do Cedar in Isotope. So this is super cool because you can use, you can start to use Isotope almost as a DAW for, you know, most of your dialog processing if you want to go that route. So I'm just going to say, sure, Minus 8.5 is probably fine. And I could probably... Let me listen to it. Let's see. It should be respected. Harnessed. Even embraced. I'm going to push it a little bit further. And I'm actually... What I'm going to do... Is I'm going to switch plugins, I think. I think I'll use... I think I'll use a tiny bit of cedar on it, too. Uh, we'll just go, like, th three... Noise should not be feared. It should be respected. Harnessed. Cool. I can hear the noise gating in between a little bit, but maybe I can live with that if the end result is a cleaner file. I'm going to send this back to Pro Tools now, and we're going to render it and watch the waveform change. One thing you'll notice is that the signal has been reduced by all my, my skullduggery. So I am going to clip gain it up so that when we AB this, it's not just quieter overall. And I'm going to say probably 4 dB is about right. At this point, I'd like to AB our cleaned up version with the original version so that we can get a good idea of where we were and where we got to. So here's the before. Noise should not be feared. It should be respected. Harnessed, even embraced. Noise is not the enemy. The real battle is differentiating between good and bad noise and understanding how to control it without destroying everything in your path. And then here's the cleanup. Noise should not be feared. 
It should be respected, harnessed, even embraced. Noise is not the enemy. The real battle is differentiating between good and bad noise and understanding how to control it without destroying everything in your path. You can hear a little bit of noise gating and we did not get all the way back to this squeaky clean voiceover sound. But look how much we've reduced the noise. I mean, that is a huge shift. We've gotten rid of most of the transient noises. Uh, we've gotten rid of the tonal hum and we've gotten rid of, of I would say, 70% of the broadband noise. So this, I think, is good enough for now. Again, keep your original version in case the director or you decide that this is too much processing. You have a way to go back. And the, the copy that you want to keep is an edited, edited copy, meaning if you've done proper dialogue editing, which I go through in other videos, then you can just flip over to the edit that hasn't been cleaned up, but, but it is edited, and you can reprocess stuff from there. I hope these five tips have helped you. Again, just to, to go back through them, number one is deconstruct your thinking into tonal, transient, and broadband noise, which is mirrored in the deconstruct module. Learn how to use this module. It will save your butt so many times with um, different things that you have to, to fight against. So then what order do you tackle them in? Do the tonal problems first. Then do transients, which I like to use decrackle for your kind of run-of-the-mill mouth clicks. And then you want to do simple edits in two dimensions to get rid of the, the other stuff. We did that for both the tonal, the, the, you know, the siren, and we did that for the mouth clicks that decrackle did not get rid of. And then using plugins surgically in RX, whatever you've got, whether it's Cedar or Accentize or Akon and Young Jeezy, whatever it is, use it. In Isotope, uh, if you know, if you're not mixing this, if you're just editing editing the dialogue, maybe don't use it or check with a mixer. Hey, is it cool if I clean things up broadband a little bit, or do you want to leave the broadband to the mix stage? Most of them will want to do it themselves. If you're mixing it, then hey, pick whatever you want. But using plugins in Pro Tools with you know a a precise selection, even a frequency selection, uh, is a, just a great way to do less damage to the audio versus just, you know, batch processing stuff. So if you don't have any plugins and you just have RX, then you'll have to stick with um, Dialogue Isolate, which use very carefully. Uh, try not to do like, you know, anything more than I'd say minus six on Dialogue Isolate. There's also Dialogue Denoise that you could use. Oh, that's Guitar Denoise. Oh, it's voice, <laughs> voice, you know, sure. Yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, use this. You can see I do very little reduction. I hardly even use this, but when I did, it was, you know, maybe 2 to 5 dB. That's kind of the golden rule for noise reduction stuff is 2 to 5, maybe 6, maybe 8 dB you can get away with on some of the better tools, but you don't want to be in that 10 to 12 range because it's going to it's gonna start to sound washy and weird. Yeah, those are my tips. Hopefully they've helped you out. I wanna thank you guys for watching this video and for all the support. It's really, it's been amazing. Uh, and I'm gonna to try to keep making videos as time permits. So until then, I'll see you next time.